Hey guys, this is a playthrough of Resident Evil 2 Remake's Leon B scenario on Hardcore, no damage, with an S plus rank. So, I actually had this one done for a couple days, but I didn't get around to doing the commentary until after I had already finished routing and recording Claire B, which is also waiting for a commentary track right after this one. Uh, but I've done all of the scenarios now, so I can move on Claire. to probably going to take Hope a break from this game for a little while. I have other plans. I want to revisit these no damage runs uh, with no save, no damage. And I also want to do a story mode playthrough, collecting all of the files um, and such with all the cutscenes left in and uh, with no HUD, a HUDless run. But yeah, that'll probably come after I move on to whatever next project I decide to do after this. For the beginning of this, we're just going to run up and get the bolt cutters from the beginning of B as usual. You should have already played B scenario if you're attempting this, honestly. Um, once we grab the bolt cutters after the next cutscene or skipping the next cutscene, we're going to hold directly to the right on this stick and run so that those two zombies don't get us, the police officer that's immediately in front of you, and then the female zombie that gets up near the gate. Uh, because if you're not fast enough, she'll get up and be able to grab you. We're going to run in and get the key, change Leon exactly. into his police uniform, grab the hand grenade, uh, grab the uh, M1911, which is our main handgun for this run. And put away the Matilda, because we don't really need the Matilda. We're trying to get a stun on this police officer zombie here, and then throw a frag. These zombies are very RNG. Their positions are completely random. And the best advice I can give you is to try to clear a path by using leg stuns and the frag grenade, because we don't really need the frag. It's an extra. They give it to you to clear out those zombies. Just try to find a good way of using it, because there are so many different locations those zombies can be in. There's no one way I can tell you, oh, this is going to work every time. Um, we're going to be collecting 45 rounds this playthrough, which is what you get on the B scenario, rather than 9mm, because we have a 45 now. So there's going to be some differences we'll have to get into about that. But for now, we're going to run up here and grab the boards from down the hall and the weapons locker keycard. Then we got to be really careful coming around this corner because these two flaming zombies are going to be in different positions. Uh, I like to break this one's leg off to make it safer to get by the next one. It costs a little bit more ammo, but we're going to have plenty of ammo as Leon. So then we're going to carefully peek around the corner and try to get a leg stun on this one and run by him. Again, I think that's just the safest way of doing it. We're going to be looking pretty low on ammo, but uh, we'll get more. Going to grab these boards here and head to the save room. Going to take an immediate right and just squeeze past Elliot to the right, grab the knife out of the wall, and we're headed to the save room. 45 uh, caliber guns in both of the V scenarios have a much higher damage rating as well as stun rating uh, than the 9mm handguns that Leon and Claire get in their A scenarios. So you can get stuns a lot easier on leg shots, especially with focus shots. We're going to grab the shells from right outside the save room door and then bank some stuff. Uh, I'll explain more on the banking after we've actually cleared the room. You want to grab everything in the room. You might have to put something away, but you want to grab the yellow gunpowder in one locker, handgun rounds out of the next, the magnum bullets off of the sink in there, and then the fuse. We're going to want to leave this room with the bolt cutters the boards, the weapons locker keycard, your handgun rounds, and that fuse, but nothing else, including your handgun. You're going to put your handgun away. We need inventory space. For Elliot here, just try to, he can be in a few different spots, but if he's right here, just try to get him to turn to one side and then run around the opposite side. Just be careful and you'll be fine. We're going to use the bolt cutters to unchain this door. And in the office, it's the usual that we do in all the scenarios. Grab the flash grenade right here. Grab the handgun rounds on this dead body. Run into the mini office. Uh, grab the valve and grab the yellow gunpowder. And now we're going to unblock the door and leave. If that zombie to the right gets in your way, you can go the long way around the table and spend some extra time to be safe. We're going to take a right here instead of going immediately to the fuse door, though, and come in here for another set of boards and more handgun rounds. Leon needs uh, as many handgun rounds as possible. 
So we're also coming down here into the presentation room to grab what you'd normally grab in A when coming through here for the first time. We also need those three boards because Leon needs to board the windows in the west hall. So, excuse me, zombies don't uh, come through there later. Next we're gonna pop the fuse in here, open the shutter. The zombies out here, there are three zombies in the main hall, can be in slightly random positions, at least two of them can. Just try to avoid uh, if they're in their w if they are in your way, excuse me. We're gonna grab the handgun rounds on this couch on the way by to the west hall. And we have to walk in the west hall, because in B scenario, there is a liquor here. A callback to the liquor being in the west hall in the original Resident Evil 2. Now, we're going to board these windows, starting with the one right beside the liquor, uh, because later zombies will bust through if these aren't boarded, and we cannot afford to have zombies in this hall uh, with the liquors. So we're going to board this window next, and then the one at the end of the hall. Once you get about around this far, where I am right now, you can actually start running, and the liquor won't hear you because he's too far down the hall. And to the left in this room, there's more handgun rounds. We need those. Since we got the bolt cutters early in B scenario, we can open this uh, door here the first time through, rather than having to go through the window. And we can get the detonator. There's also another flash grenade right here, and we're going to be discarding the bolt cutters to get them out of our inventory. Next, we're going to be popping immediately into the weapons keycard locker room because we're going to type in first 109 to get more handgun rounds. And then we're going to use the weapons uh, keycard to gain access to the shotgun, which we're going to be using a lot in B scenario, even more than A, in order to get zombies out of the way. B scenario has far more zombies in it than A scenario does, and we need to clear them out. Leon has a very easy time of this due to the fact that he has the uh, shotgun. So we're going to walk back to the door, and these zombies will be trying to break through it. Wait just outside the range that the door is going to hit you when they open it. And when they bust through, you'll get a free decapitation headshot while they're in their animation here. Uh, sometimes this guy will walk through early before the door closes. Or you can let the door close, and then he can bust that down as well. But regardless, you just need to decap these two zombies, get them out of your way, and we're headed into the west office. Gunpowder on the table here, which we're going to mix with the yellow from earlier to make shotgun shells. And there is more handgun rounds in this locker here. Then we're going to come into the safe and dial in 9, 15, 7 in order to get the only inventory upgrade that we get in this playthrough in the form of this side pack. We're not getting the... Uh, Extended mag for the Matilda because you don't find any 9mm rounds in this playthrough. You can make them by mixing two blue gunpowders, but it's pretty much pointless. We're only going to be getting 45 rounds, so we're only going to be using Leon's M19. We're going to run down that hall back there and get some more handgun rounds, and then we're going to take care of these zombies. This first one that busts through the window, you can get him while he's standing up. Then the female zombie upstairs is going to fall over the railing, and you can get her while she's on the ground. Then we're going to take these boards and board this window like we normally would in the A scenario so that later more zombies don't come through the open window. Then there is another male zombie up the stairs. And we're going to get him to go over the same banister that the female zombie went over and pop his head in the same spot. That will make sure that this hall is clear later, because Leon needs to come back to RPD-3 for the Magnum. There was handgun rounds, where that female officer originally reanimated from. And we're going to grab those. And then upstairs, there's more handgun rounds on this box, followed by a zombie that isn't normally here in a scenario. And we need to decap him as well. Uh, we're going to open this locker right now, but we're not grabbing the Magnum rounds that are inside. The code is DC. M, and uh, we're just going to leave the magnum rounds here uh, for when we come back through. I'm just opening it early. Then we're going to grab the spade key and turn around and go back downstairs. Because we're going to be taking a more optimal route. Since we got the bolt cutters early, we have the valve early, the first time that we come into this hallway. So we can go in the valve room, open this next uh, combination locker. The combination for this one is C-A-P. And uh, we're going to grab the shotgun shells inside, as well as the shotgun shells in this locker over here, and then use the valve.
to shortcut our way straight to the star's office. Coming up uh, here, uh, we're going to want to grab the blue gunpowder in the locker to the left, and then the shotgun shells on this couch. Then we're going to run past the star's office a little bit. There's no liquor in this hall like there was in A scenario. And we're going to trigger the appearance of Mr. X, who shows up early in B scenario. Now we're triggering his appearance so we can run in the star's office and grab this stuff while he's walking around. I'll explain a little bit in a second. There's shotgun shells on that desk, and then there's a flash grenade behind that. Over to the left, there's some handgun rounds that are only here in B scenario. And then there's this yellow gunpowder over here, which we can mix with the, uh, with the, yeah, uh, excuse me, blue from earlier in the locker. And we're going to grab the battery for the detonator and go ahead and combine that. Uh, I discarded some handgun rounds because we only need one stack of handgun rounds. So I'll tell you where more are if you don't have one stack, but we just need one stack of 60 and then your M19 filled with 7. Now, again, like I said earlier, we aggroed Mr. X because he, his, he has RNG on his AI and he'll either walk back where he came or that way. Uh, and we do all our stuff in the star's office after aggroing him so that if he decides to walk back the way he came He'll hit the locked door turn around and then go all the way out so that he gets out of our way for when we need to come down here afterwards We're gonna grab the unicorn medallion and the combination is children scale worm and then we're gonna run in the uh, Librarian head pop this female zombie now. Mr. X is around so he can hear you in here shooting things So we're on kind of a time limit now we want to head pop these other zombies before Mr. X comes in this room. So head pop this fat zombie here, and then this zombie that's eating ass. Uh, we want to make sure that all three of them are decapitated before X reaches us. If you have a little bit of extra time, you can go over to these bookshelves and move them. Uh, this one on the right, once to the left. And then those two back there, you can move those once to the right. Now, I don't think I opted to do it yet. But do you, if you think you have some time, move those. We're going to grab the knife off the officer's corpse, which I did earlier, and we're going to grab the red book that's next to the door out. Then X is finally going to make his way in. He's going to drop down the ladder, and we're going to juke him. We're just going to go ahead and open this door real fast, just so it's open for later. We're going to use the spade key on it. But we're going to run up the stairs to get away from X and go into the attic. And we're going to have to run Mr. X around a couple times in this library, which again is why we killed the zombies in here to make sure we had room. I'm going to head pop this zombie that falls from the ceiling, and then I'm going to run over here and place the detonator. Now, you could wait to do this, um, but we're going to make sure X goes this way, and then we're going to run around the opposite way. Uh, if you're not fast enough or if X is too far behind, the bomb might hit you. It does not cause damage to Leon, though. If it hits you from behind, it just staggers Leon. I did something risky here and decided to move these shelves because I knew that X was going to jump down off the ladder, and you do have a moment where he can't attack you once he jumps down because he has to, like, regain his composure. I would not actually recommend doing this, though. It is super risky. Uh, but, however, we're just going to juke X again. Uh, you can either go back up the stairs or get it running around in a circle and then go back up the ladder, which is faster. And then we're going to run in here with just enough time to get the lady medal or medallion and get back up before X corners us. So the uh, B scenario combination for the lady medallion is Ram, Harp, Bird. And I should have mentioned this with the unicorn one. The combinations in B scenario for all of these are different. Uh, B scenario has a lot of different puzzle solutions, actually, compared to uh, A. There are also some different item placements and enemy placements as well. So we're just going to do the same thing we did to X last time. Get him to go on the right-hand side there, and then we go around the other side, and then leave through the door, climb down the ladder. Um, if you needed more handgun rounds, there were some more handgun rounds both in the attic on a shelf and underneath that bookshelf on the left-hand side that I moved. Uh, so after we get done in the library, we're going to come down to the main hall, and we need to headcap some more zombies, two to be exact. This male zombie here and Marvin, who we just decapped a second ago. Um, we need to get rid of both of them, decap them as fast as possible. If X is right on you, you, you may have to uh, do a little bit of juking. Whatever you need to do to get rid of these zombies, because they need to be gone later. We're going to place the medals in the statue, and then find a way back upstairs without X hitting us and get the lion medallion, which the combination for in the B scenario is crown, brazier, dove. Some people also just remember it by crown, flame, bird with herb. 
I've heard some people say that. Uh, so we go ahead and go back downstairs, put the lion metal in, and now we're done with our PD-1. So on the left-hand side here, we got some more shotgun shells. And we are going to be bringing the shotgun with us for Birkin, unlike the A scenario. We're going to put away the flash grenades, the spade key. We're going to keep our handgun rounds, the shotgun shells, and the shotgun. We're going to put away the red book. We're going to keep the knife. And we're going to grab our M19, because we're primarily going to be using the M19 to kill Birkin. Now, as I mentioned earlier, the M19 is stronger than the Matilda, because the Matilda is a 9mm, and the M19 is a 45. Hence the 45 rounds, the ACP that we've been picking up. Um, so the strat for Birkin remains the same as the A scenarios. I got a little bit tripped up here. Um, but, uh, we only collect one stack of handgun rounds, whereas in A scenarios, if you watched any of those videos, I recommend that you collected around 100 handgun rounds, and we only have 67. Trust me, this is enough handgun rounds, but because we're going to be using the handgun again later, I try to be conservative here. And this actually, this boss fight goes a little bit tits up. Uh, uh, and I have to use some extra shotgun shells you don't normally don't have to use. So this boss fight is a good example of what to do in the worst case scenario, because this was the worst case scenario for me. To start off, we're just going to start unloading into Birkin. We're not going to bother using focus shots, which do do more damage if you let the reticle focus in, uh, like we were previously, because it, it, while it will save you ammo, and if you're really concerned about ammo, you can do it, it takes a lot longer to actually put Birkin down waiting for each shot to focus in, and it's a lot riskier because he's so fast. Um, another thing you're going to be seeing me do is click my aim and turn my camera slightly to the right or left and just aim for a split second. I'm doing this to try to get Birkin to attempt a pipe swing or a grab and whiff. I actually got tripped up and almost got hit here or grabbed because I wasn't paying attention. You want to prioritize movement above all things. Prioritize keeping a straight run. Don't get hit by him. Uh, I take a lot of risks because I've played this fight a lot, but you can take less risks for sure. Just make sure that you do, you know you don't fuck around with him. Um, you can aim for the eye to do slightly more damage, but it's really not necessary. It's far more important to not miss. Uh, so if you think aiming at the eye like you just saw back there, I missed about two shots while aiming for the eye. If you think that's going to happen too much, then don't do it. And as you see, I got tripped up again and had to use the knife to get out of the grab, which is exactly what we bought, brought, excuse me, the knife. Uh, if you get grabbed, you have an escape option, because getting grabbed and then using a defense item does not count as damage. So, worst case scenario happened for me in this fight, and I actually missed too many shots, and uh, I ran out of ammo. So if you run out, I recommend switching to your shotgun, which is why we bring it, and pumping a couple shells into him. You can aim in the general vicinity of the eye, since the shotgun has spread and will hit all around it anyway. It's especially effective after he does a big pipe swing, and if he gets down, you can run straight up to him for a close range shot. Now, normally, you will have enough hanging rounds to do that without ever using a shotgun shell, and normally... Uh, if you do have to use the shotgun, it's only one to two shells. Not only did I run out of handgun ammo, uh, and not down him with just that, I had to use four shells. So this was literally worst case scenario. I've played this, uh, around three other times. I uh, practiced a spite around three other times, I should say. And, uh, it's absolutely worst case scenario right here. So, what I'm saying is, since you're going to see the rest of the run still works out, I still do no damage, I still get an S+, plus, I still have plenty of ammo, it's okay if it ends up being worst case scenario for you. Around the other three ends of the boss room, as you've been seeing, I've been running to three other dead ends. There is more handgun rounds that you can attempt to get in the fight, but if you do, be careful because, like I just said, they're all dead ends, and he can corner you and hit you or grab you. So you're going to need to try to bait a grab, and then use the knife to escape if you still have it. At the top of the ladder, turn right and grab the blue gunpowder. And I should mention before I forget that there was also a frag grenade down there by one of the boxes of handgun rounds, if you were watching the footage carefully. We need that frag grenade, so don't leave that in Birkin's boss room. If you forgot it climbing the ladder, you can go back down and get it. Um, we also do need those other boxes of handgun rounds, because we are going to be using the handgun uh, two other times in this playthrough. Once for dogs, and second, I'm going to be using, an, um, or showing, a alternate strat to a strat that I showed in my Leon A playthrough that makes it a little bit safer from what I did in Leon A later in the sewers. But 
that's not relevant right now. For now, we're going to put away the frag grenade. We're going to put away basically everything but the handgun, the shotgun without the shells, and the rest of your handgun ammo. Uh, you can actually... I think I choose to bring my shells here. Yeah, I do. So I guess you could bring the shells. I, I think I was making sure I had enough. So if you want to be safe... But you shouldn't actually need to bring your shells, because we're going to be making more shells along the way. Um, we're going to run up here and uh, activate the keycard cutscene. I don't know why I spent so long on that menu instead of just backing hey, out. I'm not done talking to you. And then go to the jail. Now, as usual, you don't have to kill this zombie. There's a zombie on the floor in here that will reanimate later as a crawling zombie. I'm going to head pop him with the shotgun, because uh, later we're going to need to leave this area past a bunch of other zombies, and sometimes he manages to grab you in the foot. So I don't like to take chances, I like to just spend the shell on him while he's on the floor for a free decapitation. We're gonna run in here and get the crank, so that we can continue. And most of the parking garage slash basement section uh, is the same as Leon A, uh, if you've played Leon A, most of it. There's gonna obviously be some minor differences. And I change how I do things uh, from my Leon A playthrough as well. Not because of B scenario, but just because I, I show some different ways that you can do things safely. Um, so we're going to run over here. And make sure to enter the firing range yet again. Uh, which is over here on the left, because we want these shotgun shells that are going to be in here. I'm still not grabbing the metal box. We're, still, we're not getting the stock for the Matilda, just like we didn't get the extended mag or the muzzle brake, because again, like I mentioned earlier, the Matilda uses 9mm, and we don't have, a nine, we don't have any 9mm boxes that actually spawn in the game unless we make some, so it's better to just use the M19 with the 45s. It's stronger anyways. Um, so we're going to run down here and into the kennels. And right immediately on the right of the door, there's a yellow gunpowder. We're going to need that. And there's these dogs in cages. We're going to use focus shots just to conserve ammo to kill these dogs with the handgun before they jump out of these cages later so they don't give us problems. Uh, it usually takes two to three shots. I missed a shot here. Don't do that. Whatever you do. Um, just be accurate. Use focus shots. Takes a second, but you want to make sure to get rid of these dogs, and I prefer to use this handgun to conserve shotgun shells. Um... We're gonna take a pit stop in the morgue real fast and grab this flash grenade, because Leon needs as many flash grenades as possible. You don't have to pull the rack all the way out. We just need it out uh, enough to grab the flash grenade. We're not gonna be getting the diamond key, because the diamond key is pretty much worthless as Leon. The only thing you'd really need it for is to get the other side pack in RPD2, and we are not going to do that. It takes too much time. We don't need any more inventory upgrades as long as we route properly. So in here, um, we're going to grab the cube conductor box and the blue gunpowder on the shelf, which we can mix with the yellow from earlier to make some more shotgun shells. Um, I suppose it's better that I brought my extra shells with me in this scenario so that we make sure we have enough for these dogs. So maybe do do that after all. Over here, this puzzle changes slightly from Leon A, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, on the B scenario, to restore the power, it uh, switches 2 and 3 to restore the power. And then there's going to be a dog on our right trying to climb the fence, but we're just going to run around it, because by the time he climbs it, we're going to be on the other side, and we're going to be fine. Now out here, there's a dog trying to climb under the fence here, or the, the gate. Shoot him with a shotgun shell. Just get him out of the way fast. Then come to this corner and inch your way uh, towards the corner while looking at that pipe, because the dog's going to run down the hallway, and you're going to shotgun shell him too, just to be safe. And then there's going to be a dog that comes through this grate, and you can either gun him down with a handgun, or you can run straight up to him while he's still in the animation of coming through the grate and shotgun shell him, too. Um, either way, I handgunned him here to save on shotgun shells, because we're going to need them to cheese these dogs. So coming back into the main parking garage area, there are three dogs. I'm shooting them with the handgun to aggro them to come to this door. I've tried multiple other strategies to take care of these dogs, um, but unless your aim is really, really good, and you're really, really fast, and also get some pretty good RNG, they can be anywhere out there in that parking garage. They're fast, they're easy to miss, even with the shotgun, and 
It's just too risky on a no damage run, in my opinion, to fight them out there. Possible, but risky. And I'm trying to sow very safe strats. The safest thing to do is to cheese them at this door by camping the door, opening it, and then whenever one of them walks between this little slit right here while it's open, you pop a shotgun shell because it will instantly kill them. Um, it's okay to spend an extra few shells if one doesn't get instant killed or if you miss. See, even right there, I only hit him just through a little tiny bit of the door in the face and he died. Uh, so it's pretty easy to do. Just don't stand directly in the doorway where the door will stay open, because the dogs can actually hit you just a little bit, and they'll make Leon stumble backwards. And it does very low damage, but it does do damage. So if you're trying to do a no damage run, that will end your run. Um, regardless, that's the safest way that I've found to do that. As cheesy and slow as it is. Next, we're going to run back up to the save room from earlier, sort out our inventory. We want to get rid of the handgun. We're just keeping the shotgun for this section. We want to get rid of the flash grenade, and we want to keep the crank and the cube conductor box. Take the red book, very important, the red book, and the spade key. We need those two things. I'm mixing my uh, other gunpowders from earlier to make some more shotgun shells. And we are going to take a knife just to be safe. Uh, because decapitating with this shotgun without the shotgun upgrade, you have to be at very, very close range. I should have mentioned that earlier. And it's basically within grab range of zombies, so it can be risky without them being stunned or in another animation to go for decapitation headshots. So, right here, we gotta fight some zombies. Perfect example. So I'm gonna keep the knife on me just in case I get grabbed while going for, uh, for any decaps. If you don't get a decap the first time, you can run up to the zombie while they're stunned from the blast, like here, and get a, a second shell decap, but it's gonna waste two shells instead of one. Uh, again, this was worst case scenario. I ended up spending two shells on both of the zombies, and I still made this run work, so... Keep in mind, I'm wasting a lot of extra shells that I keep saying I don't need to waste, so... This run can work if you're missing a lot of shots, or... Not getting one decaps, whatever. We're also gonna decap, um, Elliot on the floor, as you saw, and then run back upstairs towards this hall, because we need to get the red book, uh, done. We need to get the statue puzzle done, I should say, with the red book. Uh, in order to get the magnum later. So we're going to grab this hand, combine it with the book, and put it on the statue. Now, there is going to be a liquor that falls through the ceiling behind you. And it is a callback to RE2. What you need to do is not move at all after this cutscene is over. Don't move after picking this up. Turn your camera the direction that I turn, right here to the right, and run that way. Run towards that brown box, and then around the door. The liquor will aggro as soon as you walk but he's going to miss you because you ran that direction with a jump slash or with a run-up slash, and then you'll be able to run around him to the door without getting hit. Next, we're going to run back down the hall, and we're going to use the lever on the the shutter here, and then trash the uh, crank because we're done with it. I took went ahead and took the time to get the red gem out of the scepter. <clears throat> Next, we're going to be heading upstairs to... Go to the ladder. Actually, not the ladder right away. We're gonna curve into the big gear room. I'm grabbing some extra handgun rounds for later right there in that locker. There's shotgun shells on the shelf. And then we're gonna run and grab this cog. We're not gonna kill these zombies because we're not coming back this way. So it would be a waste of shotgun shells. Now, you could um, kill them in order to have two escape routes later from Mr. X. But I wouldn't recommend it. It saves time, but this is not a speed run. Uh, we're going to grab the flash grenade out of that locker up there, and then we're going to climb down the ladder. And we're going to grab these other handgun rounds I normally don't grab on this bench here. And as I just mentioned, this is not intended to be a speedrun. I'm showing you how to get S+, plus while, which, you know, is within two hours on B scenario. And it is with no damage, but it's not an actual speedrun. Speedruns take more risks. So we don't need to Son be super bitch. fast on literally everything we do. We can play it safe. Coming down here, two zombies are going to burst out of this door here, and you're going to shoot the first one with a decapitation headshot uh, as soon as he comes through the door while well, he's stuck in that animation, and then the female zombie behind him, I failed to get a decap on. I had to spend two shells, but same concept. You're going to decap her, hopefully with one shot, unlike me. Then we're going to come in here and sort our inventory. The only things we want are the shotgun, the shells, the cube conductor box, the large gear, and of course, we want... Uh, that club key. Now, I'm trying to think here. Did I come back for the spade key? Because I forgot to unlock the door? I think I forgot to unlock the spade key door earlier. Oh, I'm taking a knife. 
Maybe I missed... If I did forget to unlock that spade key door earlier, you want to unlock it on the way by to the crank. I think I actually forgot to mention that. That's why we brought the spade key. That way it will be open when we come back here. Sorry about that. Um, I hope I actually didn't forget to open it on this run. And then have to go back for it. Regardless, we don't actually have to unlock that door. It's just so we have another escape route. Really? Ah, uh, that's why I bring it. But... Regardless, we're gonna come in here, get Mr. X to chase us. You could bait a punch. Again, in a speed run, we would bait a punch to get by him, but it's too risky. So we're gonna bring him out back onto the roof and do a safe little loop around uh, in order to get by X. So, like I said, uh, we don't actually need to go through that door we unlocked earlier, if I actually unlocked it. We can just go down here. This is where we want to go. I just made sure to unlock that door to have an extra escape route if I needed one. And we're going to run in here through this office, which shouldn't have any zombies in it at the moment. One will come through the window behind you, but it should be clear for now. And we're going to head back into the main hall from here. Now, this is where things get tricky to both explain and to do. We need to get to the club key door that's in the west hall, but there are two liquors in this hall. So we're going to pop in piss one of them off by running and then run back back straight through the door and hopefully that liquor is going to leave and there's only going to be one liquor but that one liquor is still a massive pain in the fucking ass i make sure to wait here until the music fades out to make sure that second liquor leaves the hall and you can see he's left because he won't be in this little alcove right here now that other liquor is a big problem there's a lot that's going to happen in this next section um and the best i can tell you is you're going to need to be very careful and you're going to need X to not be right on your ass when you first come in here. So, obviously, you can't have him right on your ass when you grab, or when you're trying to piss the liquor off. You're going to grab that frag and this uh, lever, or uh, I should say this um, jack handle. And X eventually is going to come in here automatically. Sometimes it will take him longer than others. You can hear him coming right now. I don't know why I opened the door here. I think I was checking where the liquor was. Here's the tricky part. You're going to need to run X around in this room like normal, but the liquor is usually going to be right outside this fucking door, and he's going to aggro on you if you step to him too close. And you can't run right away while this door is open from X opening it. Because if you do, the liquor will hear your footsteps from X opening the door, and he will aggro and stand right next to the door waiting for you. So as you can see here, I was actually worried about the liquor because he's hit me before coming out of this room, and I was trying to think of, I was trying to stall X and maybe bait a punch, do something, to try to think of a good way out of this room. The best thing I can tell you is to try to walk while the door is open after X opens it, run X around the room if you need to, like I'm doing, and then wait for an opportunity to walk out this door and pray to a deity that you believe in, because. You just kind of need good RNG on where that liquor is going to decide to go and what he's going to decide to do. Once you're about five feet from the door, you can run. Or when you hear X is getting too close behind you, because he will be following right behind you. And the liquor shouldn't manage to catch up to you. But you need to be very careful. It's probably the riskiest part of this entire run to do no damage. Because it is just very tricky. We're going to head up to the library and take the right-hand path here. Now, this is the part where if you didn't do these shelves earlier, if you didn't move them earlier, you may have to spend the flash grenade in your inventory to stun X and then move these shelves. You need to move these two shelves once to the right if you manage to set it up correctly. If you don't have uh, both sets of shells moved or you only have one moved, you're probably going to need to flashbang X when he comes in the room and then move them. Or you can try baiting him up to jump down from the ladder and try that risky strat from earlier. Whatever you need to do in order to get those moved. Over here, coming up towards the gear puzzle room, there is a zombie that we need to decap. Again, I ended up wasting two shells on him instead of one. Then we're going to put the cog in here. And run upstairs after this cut, this unskippable cutscene. I don't know what I'm doing here. Oh, I forgot the large gear again, like I always do. Grab the large gear after using it. Don't be like me. And then we're going to head up on top and just solve this. There's nothing really 
much going on here. Um, this was only about my second full run attempt. I had practiced sections other than this, but it's a lot less shaky than my Leon A playthrough, because while both uh, I did this about the same amount of practice in, um, for this one, it had I, j I did this right after Leon uh, A, excuse me, I almost said Leon 1. I I don't have to write a report on so, this. a lot of the skills from Leon A transferred to Leon B. Uh, we're going to come in the back hallway here and grab this large gunpowder for later. Because we need more shotgun shells. Shotgun shells are Leon's greatest resource. And don't forget to grab the cube conductor box. Which I almost forgot to do, or did I forget? No, nope, almost though. Almost forgot to grab the cube conductor box. Don't forget that. Next, we're going to wait until X is out of our way. Now, we need to go back down towards the library, because we're not going across like we do for Claire. Um, so, X can't be directly in the library, like right in your way. He can be in the library on the bottom, and you can bait him to come up. Uh, but he, we just need to make sure he's not in our immediate path so hopefully he goes the other way like he did here or you can wait for him to go this way and just wait long enough because he'll and be very careful when you leave because he'll probably end up going to the bottom floor of the library out of your way regardless we're just gonna head back to the library and then we're gonna take an immediate left and fall down that hole just to shortcut our way back to the bottom um, and then we're gonna just head down the stairs and head across the main hall I don't know why I was headed back in here this is not where to go. Um, we're going to head back through the uh, the east office. We're headed back through the east office, the way we came in here. If you need to, you can go upstairs. There's a female zombie in the way, but you could pop her and then run past her through the door that we should have unlocked. Um, and east office will have a zombie in it, but you should be able to get around him. Even if you have to go the long way around on the other side of the desk, you can just take one of the two sides of the desk. Headed back to the east side save room. These zombies are going to break through these windows, but don't worry about that. As long as you're fast grabbing this item in here, they won't be a problem. We're going to stop into the box. Uh, really, all we need is to grab one item, but I think I'm going to store my other shit, too. Uh, so I'm going to get rid of the frag grenade, the large gunpowder, the knife. And we're going to grab a flash grenade. You don't actually have to put away the knife or any of that other shit, really. Uh, you just need to get a flash grenade. That's, at the end of the day, what you need going into the prison. Once you have both the cube conductor boxes. Because we're going to need a flash grenade in order to actually get out of the jail. Um, we killed these dogs earlier, so that they would not be a problem now. You could wait and kill them at this point. But I wouldn't recommend it, because you don't want to forget they're there, uh, and it's better to get them, especially if you're trying to do a no damage run, it's better to get them out of the way early. That way, uh, if you do all of RPD too, then come back and take a dog bite, you don't have to, you know, you'd have to restart your run after way more than if you did it before RPD too. So, uh, this up here is a puzzle that is, uh, kind of hard to explain. Uh, my recommendation is just to copy my movements that I make. Um, in order to solve it in the fewest number of moves, which will get you a in-game record achievement. The fewest number of moves for Leon B is 10. This puzzle is different from Leon A's. They are, uh, each character and each scenario has a different version of this puzzle. Um, but you basically just need to get the power from these two ends to the other end. Um, also through that third yellow light in the middle, because it actually requires three lines of power. Um, and like I said, you just need to do it in 10 moves. The the solution that I'm showing here, I, I'm actually, I think, reading it off of notes right here, because I have it written down, um, is the fewest number of moves. So. We're going to grab the key item we need to leave the garage, and then all these zombies are going to bust out. So we're going to go over here from the switch. And we're going to come over here to where Mr. X is going to cut us off. And we're going to have to do a little bit of juking. I actually took a risky juke here. You can lead him around a wider circle than that. But you just need to get around him safely. That's the whole point. 
and then in here, these zombies are going to cut us off, so we're going to use that flashbang that we talked about bringing in order to get past them. This is why I like shooting that zombie that's crawling on the ground. Because sometimes he won't get stunned by the flashbang, and he'll bite you in the ankle on the way by. So I don't like chancing that, and I just decapitate him early on. That way he's not even a variable in the, in the uh, problem anymore. We can just eliminate any variables and know that we'll be able to get out of the prison by using one flashbang. taking a drink here. Um, this is just a, a lot of walking and talking. We're just going to run up to the gun shop over here, wait for Ada to lockpick the door and keep going. It's just a lot of walk, talk, walk, talk. Um, I would say that the B scenarios are much harder than both of the A scenarios. Uh, I remember in my Leon A commentary that I said I thought Leon A was harder to no damage and harder in general than Claire. I stand by that, but I actually think that after playing Claire B, Claire B might actually be harder than um, Leon B, but only if you don't get the machine gun with Claire, which I don't, including in the route that I'm going to be showing. Uh, for Claire B. We're going to grab the uh, frag grenade that's on that shelf and the shotgun upgrade uh, before we leave. The shotgun upgrade that you get the long barrel there uh, increases the damage that the shotgun does and increases its range so it can actually get decapitations from a safe distance outside of lunge range of zombies now. Um, to go back to what I was saying earlier, uh, I do believe Claire B is actually harder unless you get the machine gun. Um, you could spend extra time getting the machine gun in Claire B, just like I spend extra time getting the Magnum for Leon here. But I chose to route it without it, and it made it slightly harder just because she's tighter on resources due to it. Because I basically just used my A route, but adapted it for B scenario. Uh, and it does work out pretty well, and it gets done a lot faster than both Leon A and Leon B because he has to go back to RPD3. But uh, if you don't get the machine gun as Claire, it ends up making it harder. Uh, down here in this item box to the left, I'm going to grab the Matilda. And that's literally just for the purpose that up ahead we're going to need to shoot something uh, with a single bullet. And I want to save a shotgun shell. And I also, I'm just going to use Matilda because it's at the top of the item box listing. Uh, and we don't actually use it ever again anyway, so again? it's just convenient. We're going to drop down here and get attacked by a big-ass sewer. Gator. Sewer. Pause, gator? I don't know why I paused there. But yeah, this sewer gator down here. Uh, it's just an automatic running sequence. All you have to do is hold left, then go over to the right. He's going to snap his jaws twice for the right side. So, well, he's on the left, you're on the right. And then but run back over left, and he's going to do a very quick jaw snap, and then you can run wherever you want. I just stay in the middle because the sequence is basically over at that point. Um, he, you're going to slide down here. He's going to bite this uh, gas vein, the gas pipe, and uh, you're just going to pop it with your Matilda to kill him. Um, there's a frag grenade on that. You overgrown son of a bitch. to the left uh, right after you get down here. Make sure to grab that frag grenade uh, because Leon needs as many frag and flash grenades as possible for his final boss. Leon, up here. Technically not the final boss in B scenario, get up here. but still. B scenario does have an extra final boss at the end that you have to account for Can't when ammo routing, because you're going to need a little bit more ammo. You, the virus people into monsters, you can technically uh, kill the actual final boss of both B scenarios with just a knife. Uh, it's especially easy on PC. Um, because on PC, the knife uh, is tied to variable frame rate. Uh, well, no, I should say the knife is tied to variable frame rate. So on PC, if you have a frame rate like over 120, uh, the knife will do more hits, not more damage, but more hits, the more, uh, the higher your FPS. So if you're on a, a pro console, or you are on 
uh, PC and have a very high frame rate, the knife will lose durability faster and will also hit more, um, which allows it to do, do more DPS. It makes its DPS go through the roof, and that's actually what's used in speedruns on PC to kill most of the bosses in the game, because it does such crazy DPS. Regardless, uh, we're coming up on the point where I'm going to have to split my recording early because of how my recording setup works. Um, but I got it a better split than last time <laughs> with Leone, because my recording actually fucked up you on Leone. Uh, we're going to do the Ada segment here, run over to this ladder, get the EMF Secret visualizer, point. and I found a neat little trick that I hadn't found out. I'm late to the party on this. I hadn't found out from my Leon A runs. Uh, if you mash the button required to fire, uh, which scans or activates, I should say, with the EMF visualizer. Uh, so on, you know, right trigger on Xbox R2 on PS4, left click on PC. Uh, if you mash when interacting with these, it actually completes them faster than holding. Also, uh, you can get them to about 70 or 80% done and then look away and they'll actually auto-complete themselves. Regardless, we're gonna get rid of the fan here and then we're gonna aggro this zombie, make him stand up, and then shoot him in the leg from up top just to be safe. Because we want him to not have a leg, as crawling zombies cannot go through doors. And he will come out this door and follow us down and be a risk later if we don't take care of his leg now. We shoot him up from up top just to eliminate any risk of him grabbing and biting us. Um, there's handgun bullets on that barrel up there, uh, just to have some extra. You shouldn't need more than the box we're going to get at the end of this pathway, but just to be safe. Uh, we're going to take back out the visualizer once we get to this zombie that drops down from the top. And there is a another scannable power junction box right here. Uh, and then we're going to run back here, and there's another box of handgun rounds and a flash grenade. We're going to need both that box of handgun rounds, if you didn't grab the earlier one, and that flash grenade to get out of here safely. So for the first zombie around this corner, uh, he normally is walking, not crawling. If he is crawling, I like to just try to kill him uh, or incapacitate him. But normally if he's walking, I blow his leg off and then run around him. And for these two zombies that should be both near each other, coming through that little... Uh, that little small, tight walk area. I don't even know what the hell I'm trying to call it, but uh, for those two, you're going to throw a flashbang at them. It's going to stun both of them. You run by them, and that's basically the only risk that we're going to have for this section. In a second, uh, Mr. Tex... Mr. Tex... Mr. X, excuse me, is going to uh, chase us, but as long as you do this fast, he shouldn't be able to catch you. There is a junction box to the right, and then you're going to pull this switch, and then right above the switch, there is a another switch you have to activate to transfer the power from the door to this fan back here and then you're just gonna mash on the fan and walk right up to it and just hit X as soon as it's broken and Ada will slip on through and X never even got close to you there's some more handgun rounds up there and I think the intention is that you can shoot X in the head a few times to stun him and then have time to do the fan but they don't matter because we're not gonna be shooting X he's never even got gonna get close to us so you could ignore those um, we're going to run up here and activate, or I shouldn't say activate, I should say open the incinerator door using this lever. Because we need to go in the incinerator and get uh, the wristband key item. And then, after we grab the wristband, Annette's going to lock us in here. Uh, and she's going to have a little bit of a talk with us before we have to solve a sort of puzzle to get out. That junction box that I just looked at behind me and to the left is the box that we're first going to be activating. We have to activate three junction boxes and then overload three power boxes above the door. So behind us and to the left, like I said, is the first one. Then we turn around and overload the left hand power box. Then we hit the switch to our left directly. And then we do the right power box. And then to our right directly and a little bit up. There's another lever, and then we activate the final box while walking towards it, just to be faster, and we're out. Makes this a cakewalk. So that is basically the entire Ada segment. We're just going to walk out here, take a left, and finish it off. Um, there really isn't too much risk with doing the Ada segment. There is a uh, achievement, a trophy slash achievement, and an in-game record for finishing this section with using nothing but the visualizer. And I would not recommend doing that unless you're on standard. Because um, you might take a hit. 
So right here I'm going to split the recording and we'll pick this back up in part two.